Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. Now those of you that have checked out my channel may have seen that I have made several videos regarding timber rattlesnakes over the last couple of years. Now for this timber rattlesnake production, I wanted to try something different and set up trail cameras at den sites. So back in April, I visited two New York den sites, about three miles from one another. This included an arduous hike to one of my all-time favorite timber rattlesnake dens, a hibernaculum I have featured in previous videos. Since it was early in the season and the day was cool, I didn't expect to see any snakes on the surface. But after crawling into the small cave opening, I could see two snakes tucked way in the back, including this black morph. At this site, I decided to set up two trail cameras, one on each end of the cave's opening. At the second den site, I set up one trail camera. Also at this den, I could spy at least one rattlesnake, a nice looking yellow morph deep in a crevice, patiently waiting for warmer days. For the next several weeks, I let the trail cameras be and didn't even visit the area, instead spending a lot of my free time in western Massachusetts searching for my second favorite snake, the eastern hognose. Over the course of six visits, I felt very fortunate to find a total of three hognose snakes, including this male and two females. Now check this out. So just before I published this video, I found a fourth hognose, a huge gravid female on the edge of a nesting site. Now notice her missing tail as she crawls on by the camera, but it is an old injury and it has healed over nicely. Okay, so we are back in New York and it is now the end of May, which means that all of our timber rattlesnakes have emerged from their dens and the majority have migrated up to the ridge top where they will seek out their choice basking rocks. Here the snakes will spend a good part of May before venturing into the nearby woods to hunt for prey, which primarily consists of rodents. Gravid females and snakes that are in shed will return to some of the same basking rocks during the summer months. Okay, so I went ahead and collected the memory cards from the three trail cameras that we have set up at two different den sites, including this one. And I am so eager to see what was captured on them. So let's get right to it. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna start with footage from what I consider is the smaller den. And that is the den site where we only had a single trail camera set up. First of all, a lot of the footage captured was, well, of nothing. Just the sensors being repeatedly triggered, and annoyingly so, by the wind blowing leaves. But just a few days later after I set up the trail camera, a bit of success. You can see a black morph rattlesnake up in the crevice. And throughout the next hour or so, it slowly crawled down from the ledge and basked in the leaf litter. A short time later, the camera was triggered by a second black rattlesnake coming out to join its den mate. Also notice the yellow morph up in the crevice. The yellow morph was soon to be joined by a juvenile black morph. The following day, another mild one, the camera captured this pretty cool footage of two black rattlesnakes hanging out of the crevice and a yellow one debating whether it should follow them out. A couple of hours later, and I love this clip, you can count a total of four rattlesnakes up in the crevice. Between May 1 and 2, the camera captured about the same level of emergence and activity as before, but this time, yellow-faced snakes began to really make their presence known.
between the 11th and the 12th, there was another small emergence wave. Okay, so this is exciting. Now between the 13th and the 14th, the camera by far captured the most amount of activity. Overall, I am quite pleased how the camera performed, considering my concern that the motion detectors might not get triggered by lethargic snakes, particularly younger animals emerging from hibernation. And no doubt, quite a few never triggered the camera. Not to mention that this den has another main exit hole, out of sight from the camera. Okay, so May 18 is the last timber rattlesnake, a juvenile, captured on this trail camera. The camera, however, was triggered by a wood thrush that seems aware of the snake, but isn't quite sure what to make of it. You may have noticed that this is a different angle from the earlier clips, and that is because I decided to move the camera about 10 feet and change the angle. About the last week, I had it set up. Okay, so this was a pleasant surprise, a melanistic gray squirrel. I have never even seen one in the area. Okay, so moving on to the second den. Now, ironically, despite two cameras and a larger population, rattlesnakes only triggered the cameras a handful of times. And I think this is because they were set further back compared to the other den. Plus, the rattlesnakes don't exit from an elevated crevice, which seemed to trigger the camera at the smaller den. Yet, one of the cameras captured an interesting encounter a rattlesnake at night that was climbing up and over the trail camera that was set up on a tripod. Here it is departing just as it begins to rain. Probably not the best place for a raccoon to go exploring. Here is a chipmunk seemingly clueless to any potential rattlesnake threat. Joking aside, one of my ultimate goals this year with the trail cameras was to capture interactions between rattlesnakes and other animals. And this porcupine stumbling upon several rattlesnakes emerging from the den is revealing. The porcupine recognizes the potential danger, backs away while chattering its teeth, something they do when they feel threatened. Alright, before I let you guys go, if you are interested in the types of cameras and the settings I used for this production, well I included that in the description below. Please feel free to ask any questions or share some of your experiences with trail cameras, especially if they involve reptiles. So that is a wrap. Thanks for joining me once again. I hope to see some of you next time and if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. Thank you.